Thank you for taking your time to join us on the Technonet short YouTube video. Today we are so much honored to have the managing director of NATO and State of Art Kanga. We are just going to be catching up on the latest development in as much as the sign was in due. So thank you so much for taking your time. Yes, yes. All right. Today, these days, I think this has been the greatest excitement in the market. Sign was about with you. And we understand that NATO has been kind of like 280 million as part of the launch package that was uh, sent your direction. What does this mean to you as network? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Technomag. Uh, first of all, Net One is very excited. Net One, the government, we are all very excited um, to be able to get this loan facility, which has come after um, several years of hard work, of challenges along the way, all the way through. And um, finally, the development is beginning to happen. In fact, uh, the first batch of equipment arrived in the uh, 15th of September. And uh, in the next two days, we should uh, start clearing the equipment. And uh, within that consignment of equipment, there is one 4G base station, the LTE, long term information. And this particular base station will be used initially for test purposes. Once we are satisfied that everything is fine, we will then start rolling out the rest, the rest of the fourth generation base stations. So, in terms of um, expectations from our customers, um, first of all, we are going to increase the network coverage. So, so I think you, you have been speaking on the equipment. Does this mean that the deal is going to be uh, all encompassing of the equipment or is it going to be more of a cash deal? What, what yeah, does this mean? Actually, thank you for asking that question. There's this is uh, a misconception that uh, uh, we are going to be getting cash, 280, million 280 million cash. And so there's been concerns that uh, some people might, uh, management might take some of that money and intervene it for personal yes, no, yes. use. Mm -hmm. that's, that's never going to happen. Mm -hmm. This deal, the money is not coming away directly. What happens is the, the financing institution, China Exim Bank, um, upon presentation of invoices by the Chinese equipment supplier, yeah, they will then um, pay, disperse the funds to this company. And then the company in turn will supply us equipment and service. Okay. So, the so there's no cash at all coming through from the Chinese? There's, Chinese no, there's, there's no cash, there's no way. In fact, part of the documents um, include the contract between us and the Chinese company, Huawei Technologies, okay. and also the subcontracts that Huawei is going to enter into various other equipment. Those are already presented to China Exim So each time there's an invoice, they will check that invoice against the contract okay. to make sure that the goods and services that are being claimed uh, form part of the contract. Okay. So there's no way we could divert the funds. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, I think the most contentious issue is um, vehicles. Uh, there are no vehicles coming in with this project. Yeah. I think in, in most telecommunication projects, vehicles usually constitute about 2% of the total project cost. And they give you 98% of the headaches, <laughs> usually. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but there are no vehicles. We had actually, initially, we had provided for about 34 by 4 vehicles, which were going to be used um, for project implementation. Okay. It's the post operations and maintenance. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, it's, it's been a long walk. Yeah, it's one of the casualties. The scope of the project was significantly reduced. Mm. It was supposed to have been 200. After the battles that, we've been seeing the the battles press, that we know. went through, mm. as a compromise, a lot of equipment was were removed. Okay. And, and it is actually it's going to blunt the effectiveness of this. Otherwise, it's going to be a very, very successful project. Mm -hmm. But we. <coughs> You know, we're not going to lose sleep over it. We always come up with the, the plan B, mm -hmm. not plan A being the same and plan B being the same. No, okay. you know, we've got other alternatives that we're looking at. Mm -hmm. For instance, one of the issues that was um, removed from the project is um, when you put in a large infrastructure of this nature, mm -hmm. you obviously want customers to meet immediately start accessing the network to generate the revenue. Mm -hmm. But uh, the devices, the terminal devices, the headsets, 
the um, tablet PCs that we had provided, we were again forced to remove them. Okay. Yes, but it's part of this battle. We, we fought a very long protracted battle, including our minister, the Honorable Shaba. He made sure, he went to China and made sure that his counterpart signed the um, approval document. Okay. And it happened right on the last day, mm. 31st of December 2018. Okay. If we had missed that, this law would not have participated. Mm. So you can see um, there were clearly um, a lot of forces, and I'm happy to say that our minister was very supportive, but there were a lot of other forces. And the forces trying to derail, they were working together with our competitors who obviously felt significantly challenged mm -hmm. by the prospects of NetOne receiving this kind of equipment. So you were also thinking that uh, there were some indirect conflicts from yes. your own competitors locally which were also exactly. trying to deal with the exactly. same And then you have got these people who claim to be patriotic Zimbabweans uh, saying that um, this thing didn't go to China and, and they wanted the local trees to be able to supply this. Yes, yes, and, 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 yet, yeah. and yet this guy, there's no capacity whatsoever. In, in fact, he, recently the Minister of Finance spoke about this thing, mm -hmm. where somebody is awarded a tender to manufacture soap, mm -hmm. to, 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 to supply soap. He doesn't even have a manufacturing mm -hmm. plan on soap. Mm -hmm. Exactly the same thing that we had here. This guy, he, he takes us to court Right? to say he wasn't given an opportunity to supply this equipment. And the truth of the matter is, this guy has not even any capacity whatsoever to manufacture a very basic telecommunication system. Even what we call the plain old telephone system, the cable, the or ports, okay. let alone sophisticated technology like mobile, mm. which, which spans from second generation, third generation, Fourth generation LTE. Mm -hmm. All that equipment is included in this thing. Okay. So I think for, for, for interest sake, you also mentioned that you're going to be having one of the 4G LTE businesses for trial yes. purposes. Yes. That simply means that you, you are going to be going the 4G way. Yes, mm -hmm. we, definitely. We, we will um, provide a lot of 4G, fourth generation stations. They are included in this thing. Okay. These ones, there was no compromise, there was no reduction. Mm -hmm. uh, the full so the one that is coming just coming for testing people's yeah, otherwise you have the, a consignment for yes the there's a consignment coming in mm -hmm. we just wanted to make sure that we test it it meets the expected speed mm -hmm. because one of the nice things about fourth generation is the speed true uh, the speed that you can download documents mm -hmm. transcend documents understand if you go more than 20 mbps no 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 mm -hmm. 20 meg this is third generation okay and we're talking 100 mega bits per second mm. for third generation okay. and if you do what is known as carrier aggregation mm -hmm. you can include it to it can go as far as 300 megabits per second okay do you do you plan to have 4g at national level and i said today we do have 4g with some other your competitors but they do have it probably one base in cbd mm -hmm. one base in industries don't, don't wait industry yeah. Yeah. yeah this is a national project that we're doing Okay. That's why it's called the National Mobile Broadband Project. Mm -hmm. We have in our plan included in this project to make sure that the rural areas, there will be no difference. Those people out in the rural areas, the program that government has been working to provide internet for schools, the computers that His Excellency has been providing, mm -hmm. we are going to provide the means for them to access high speed data. Okay. For the internet. Maybe before I ask a question about why you are going to the rural areas, I think I, let me just take you back, Mr. Kanga. 4G, we are so excited about it, but most Zimbabweans, they are worried, especially currently today, with your platform on 3G, we are saying, I've been also using, there hasn't been satisfactory delivery in as much as data on your 3G platform. It's been an erratic and all that. Yeah, are you going to be going the 4G or are you going to try and face the this perfectly 3G? And what has been the problem with the 3G? There is also a, compliment, a very high complement of 3G base stations. Mm -hmm. Full range of 3G base stations. I will not give you the numbers, but I suffice to tell you that wherever we have a base station, mm -hmm. there will definitely be a 3G base station. Okay. Coming with this project. Right. So the speeds, um, we are also upgrading the speeds for the 3G. Mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. our customers are going to really experience very fast data communication capabilities from it.
Okay, but these days, what's been happening with the 3G has been quite erratic. What has been the problem? Yeah, they, they, they are also currently, we've got two suppliers that we're working with. Mm -hmm. the, the one in Harare is a different supply from the Chinese equipment made, and they, they are currently doing some upgrades at the moment. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, I can tell you by mid November, you will see the, you will see the difference. Okay. You'll be pleasant this surprise. Nice. Yes, yes. We, we, we can't wait for yeah. that time. Uh, yeah, we, we can't wait for that surprise. Do we, we are determined to make sure that we transform we transform the communications landscape in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so on the new... It's last week, unfortunately, we had our fiber optic cable, um, which interconnects around it. It was damaged. Yes, it was it was it took quite some time for us to get it uh, back working. Mm -hmm. Many things were actually disconnected. Unfortunately. Mm -hmm. yeah. You see, the technology, this is why it's always important to have alternative routine. Mm -hmm. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Okay. Yeah. And so we are discussing with the uh, regulator, the government and so mm -hmm. forth. Say look, yes, we understand you, but we also need to have alternative traffic routing. Okay. It is very important for your backup purposes. Backup purposes. Okay. Don't put all your eggs Sorry, in Mr. one Sorry, Mr. maybe because of time, I think I'll rush into one of the hot questions. That may also take time. I understand that there's net one we've been pioneering most of these services, especially like the mobile money services. But from the last interview that I had with you last year, we had some serious complaints, especially with the uh, protocol paralysis as far as going through the uh, state procurement board. It, are things going to be flowing as fast as they, are, they should be? Because I understand that they're supposed to also go through all these uh, bureaucratic processes for you to be able to get your things running. And, and what, have there been any changes between the way Net1 applies its information technology, technological changes? Yes, for March is going through the uh, the long SPBA. Yeah, the bureaucrats, I'm afraid, is, uh, but we, we engage in the government mm -hmm. uh, to say, look, uh, uh, we are operating in a highly competitive uh, business environment, mm -hmm. number one. Number two, net one is dependent on, is not dependent on the taxpayers' money. Okay. All the revenues, we have to go out and compete and generate our revenues. Just We're like the competitors. Yes, the, so why should we be the ones that you have to go through state procurement board well all our secrets our plans are exposed mm -hmm. to the, the very same competition that we are trying to uh, position ourselves mm -hmm. for a strategic competitive advantage mm -hmm. so we are actually shooting ourselves in the foot yeah, foot, exactly. yeah. Mm -hmm. so any plans that net one contemplates is already in the public, in the public domain. domain is already with the competitors who can implement they don't have the same bureaucratic concern Mm -hmm. They can do things much faster. Simply a phone call or video conference. So what has been the response to that uh, what is the mission? Are they going to let you off the hook? Or? We, we hope so. We hope that uh, they will listen to our plea. Um, but uh, right now it's a very sad thing. I, I, you know, I, I've been dragged to the courts for one security ten, mm -hmm. right? Where we had to do the best under the circumstances. They, they, Tender was challenged by some of the um, tenderers. Mm -hmm. right? it, in the end, a decision was taken to say, Let, let's just keep the companies that previously were contracted. Okay. We cannot leave a vacuum. We cannot leave our sites unguarded. Otherwise, mm -hmm. things will still diesel from the, the base stations across yeah, the country. And 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 the level will come down. And as a result, our customers will fly to the other competitors. Time always does that um, favor, especially when you really want to get into these most important things. But Mr. Kangai, thank you so much for taking your time to speak to Technomag. And to all our viewers, thank you so much for taking your time to watch our short Technomag video. Hope you